Hi there, me again, the uh, Barry Gibb of the film photography community, and today I am going to talk to you guys about something I've been wanting to talk to you about for a long time, but I thought I would wait before I got a little bit more experience under my belt with it, and that is a camera that I have been using as my main film photography camera for about a year and a half now, and also a camera that you should consider if you're looking for a Leica and lusting after Leica cameras, and that is the Canon P. So, like I said, I've been using the Canon P as my main film photography camera for about a year and a half, and I've taken it all over the place. I've taken it to Colorado twice, I've taken it to Utah, I've taken it through Arizona and California, I've also taken it down to the Gulf Coast of Texas, and just recently I went up and did a trip with it in Maine. So. It's been everywhere with me, and I can't say that there's another camera that I would rather have with me on trips like that. So the Canon P is a Leica thread mount rangefinder camera that was made from 1958 to 1961. And a little bit of history on what was going on in the camera world around that time. Uh, Leica had introduced their M mount four years prior, so M mount cameras like the M3 had already been out for four years when this was produced and Leica actually released the M2 at the same time as this camera. And also, uh, Nikon was getting ready to release one of the most infamous SLR cameras in history, and that is the Nikon F. So this camera, it's safe to say, had quite a bit of competition when it came out. So I think this camera kind of positioned itself as a more budget-friendly consumer camera, and if you didn't need M mount, then it offered you pretty much everything that a Leica rangefinder would offer you um, for much less money. And that's still true today. So let's go over some of the specs of this camera. Um, this is, like I said, Leica thread mount. So you've got thread mount lenses instead of bayonet mount, like the M mount or other lens mounts at the time. Uh, it also has shutter speeds from 1 1,000th of a second all the way down to bulb and an X flash sync setting that syncs flash at 1 55th of a second, I believe. So this camera has frame lines for 35, 50 millimeter, and 100 millimeter lenses, and all of the frame lines are parallax corrected in the viewfinder. So as you focus, the frame lines will move back and forth a little bit to correct for any parallax. Also, the viewfinder itself is a one-to-one -one magnification, so there's no like 0.92 magnification or anything like that going on, which means if you're somebody that likes to shoot with both eyes open, you can do that very easily with this camera. So this camera has a PC sync port on the side with a mount to mount flashes, which is pretty nice. And another uncommon thing that this camera has is it has a stainless steel shutter curtain which is nice because it's more durable than a soft shutter curtain. It won't get pinholes over time or anything like that, uh, but it does wrinkle, which is kind of an odd thing to see when you open your camera back or take your lens off is a wrinkly shutter curtain. Now, this doesn't really affect the shutter timing. It doesn't really touch your film or mess with your film in any sort of way. Um, it's just kind of weird looking because you do have a thin sheet of metal that's being moved around, so it's gonna get wrinkly. Um, but it's really, it's no hindrance to the camera. Most of these cameras have wrinkled shutter curtains and it's got no effect on performance. Finally, these cameras were offered in silver or black, um, although the black versions are very rare and hard to find. So let's go over some potential negatives about this camera. And the first most glaring issue with this camera is there's no internal light meter. Now this might be a turn off for some of you, um, but really it's not a big deal because if you really, really need a light meter, you can always use an app on your phone or you can get an external light meter to mount on your cold shoe. And there's plenty of those options that are modern for cameras like this. So it's not really a big issue. Another slight issue with this camera is with the viewfinder being one-to-one, -one, it is kind of hard to see the 35 millimeter frame lines. I actually find myself kind of moving my head a little bit to make sure 
everything that I want is in frame when I'm shooting with a 35 millimeter lens. Um, and if you wear glasses, I could see that this might be an issue for you, especially if you like shooting with a 35 millimeter focal length. The third and final negative that I can think of with this camera is the strap lugs are placed slightly forward on the camera. So if you're, if you have it on a strap, it's going to lean like this. And if it's swinging around on a camera strap, this corner, this top corner of the camera is going to crack you in the ribs and it's going to hurt a lot more than if it were just like kind of resting like this. So that's the only other negative that I can think of with this camera. Otherwise, it's really, really bulletproof and it's a really great option. So let's talk about some reasons why I really, really love this camera. Uh, the first being it's fully mechanical. There's no batteries in this camera, no electronics. And if you research film cameras, you'll quickly find out that cameras that have electronics can and will eventually brick themselves and there's not an easy way to fix electronic components. But if you have a fully mechanical camera, it might break, it might get shutter speeds out of timing, and you can just send it to a repair person and it'll get repaired. The second thing I love about this camera are the frame lines. So the frame lines in the camera, 35, 50, and 100 millimeter are some of my favorite focal lengths just for general use and general purpose photography. So that's very useful. So another thing about the frame lines, which I personally really love, but I could see why you wouldn't, is all of the frame lines are in the viewfinder at the same time. So you're seeing all of your different frame lines simultaneously. Now, some people might think that having all of your frame lines together is a little bit cluttered, but I can see two advantages of why you would want that. One, you can look and quickly decide what lens you need for something, and you can frame stuff up without having to switch lenses. Another reason having all of the frame lines in there at the same time is it helps you better frame your subjects up. So let's say I'm shooting with the 50 millimeter lens. So I've got my 50 millimeter frame lines, and I've got the 100 millimeter frame lines within that. And the 100 millimeter frame lines kind of breaks up my frame into rule of thirds, which is really nice for framing up subjects nicely and stuff like that. So I really enjoy that. Another thing that I really enjoy about this camera is it has one one thousandth of a second shutter speed, which is pretty nice for a camera this old. And it's really useful if I'm in really, really bright conditions and I want to open my aperture up a little bit more. Another reason I love this camera and a reason why it beats out a lot of Leica rangefinders, in my opinion, is it has a simple hinged door film back, which is really, really nice and way quicker than the cool looking but fiddly way of opening a Leica where you have to take off the bottom plate and swivel this back door and have this loose piece of camera hanging off. It's just, it's kind of a pain with Leicas, but this is way simpler and way faster. Another big, big positive about this camera is it is an absolute tank. Now with all of the traveling I've done with this camera, I've taken a couple spills with it and it's gotten a couple dents and nicks here and there, but it still works perfectly fine. And that is something to be said. If you're going to be traveling with a camera, it needs to be durable. And this absolutely is. It's really, really durable and it's going to last probably longer than I'll be alive. So very good build quality. Something else that I love about this camera is the lens mount. Um, I know a lot of people rave about the M mount, uh, but LTM lenses are really, really common and pretty inexpensive because just about every camera make back in the day made LTM lenses and they were much cheaper than the M mount options. So in terms of the different lenses, you could get native Canon LTM lenses, which are really, really good. Optically, probably some of the best. Uh, you can also get older Leica lenses, and there's tons of Japanese and Russian lenses that use the LTM mount as well. So you've got a lot of lens options to choose from, and that's really nice. Personally, I have three lenses for this camera. I have the Indostar 26M, which is a 50 millimeter lens that costs about 20 bucks, and it's a pretty decent lens for that money. Um, also, I have a Leica 90 millimeter F4 that I've actually done a review on, and I also have the Jupiter 12, which is a 35 millimeter lens, which is my favorite lens for this camera by far that I have. Finally, the last reason I love this camera is just the design as a whole is really, really beautiful and really, really well thought out. Uh, if you put this camera up against a Leica M2 or Leica M3, they would honestly probably tie for first place in terms of looks and design. They're just really, really well put together machines, really durable, and 
nothing seems out of place or unnecessary. So I love that. And if you have a camera that you really enjoy using, you love the feel of, and you love the look of it, you're more likely to take it out and shoot with it. And that's exactly how I feel about this camera. So finally, let's talk about price. Uh, I bought this camera body about a year and a half ago, and the body was 175 I think. And then the whole kit with all three lenses that I have cost me about $300 in total. So that is really, really cheap when you're comparing it to Leica M bodies. Now the prices on these have been going up a little bit. I think you can find a good body now on eBay for around like $230 or $250, um, which is still a good price. And the lenses, I don't think the lenses are gonna go up in price anytime soon because like I said, there's tons of LTM lenses out there. So I don't think you have to worry about the prices going up on the lenses, uh, but maybe the bodies themselves will go up a little bit. If you want an original black bodied Canon P, it's probably gonna cost you significantly more than a silver one um, just because they're way more rare. I don't think they even made a thousand of those bodies. So I'm guessing probably at least $500 for a black bodied Canon P which is still way less than an M-body and M-mount lenses. So, weigh your options. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for my review of the Canon P. I hope this was helpful and I hope I gave you some insight, maybe some things that you wouldn't have thought of before when looking for a rangefinder. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really enjoy this camera and I can't recommend it enough. It's just a great, great value if you're looking for a nice, well-built, well-designed film camera. So yeah, that's about it for this one. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Uh, I'm planning to do tons more film photography, digital photography, cinematography related content. So if you're interested in that, I'll be doing plenty of that in the future. And I'm gonna leave you guys with some of my favorite images that I've taken with this camera. Bye now.